everybody, this is uh, Thomas here with another Source Filmmaker tutorial. And today we'll be looking at the graph editor. More specifically, we're going to be looking at um, what is known as um, uh, counter animating. So the idea is you have an existing set of animation, possibly something you already created in the graph editor, like the example I'm going to show here, or um, a motion editor uh, or puppeteering animation maybe even a preset animation like say a character laughing and, and you want a specific element of that to, to be changed. And um, the important thing we're going to be focusing on is looking at you know uh, the motion that exists and identifying uh, what changes um, are taking place, like what forces are present, and then how we want to interact with those. So first of all, before I get started, I want to look at an example. Uh, this is a clip I put together um, just uh, using the graph editor. Uh, very straightforward uh, shot of a soldier standing, and he's a. Uh, oh, you can see here he's uh, actually fallen asleep uh, while on guard, and uh, and you'll see the little bit of animation we have here. And uh, so our goal here is not to recreate this little bit of animation. This is just an example of something that is there as an element to interact with. Uh, what we're going to be focusing on is on the actual helmet. You'll notice uh, it's locked into place like it normally is during the game. And our goal is we want to counter animate uh, the existing action uh, on the helmet. So let's go into the graph editor. Um, and in this example, I am going to uh, leave this area closed. Don't really need it. I find that it's, it's distracting to have elements open in Source Filmmaker that you don't necessarily need. It's very uh, easy to open them up. For example, I have the uh, animation set editor, uh, I change the hotkey so that it's bound to uh, an F4 key or something similar, something that I don't normally use. That way I can easily pop it in and out and be able to select a specific element of the soldier. So in this example, um, I could choose the helmet from here, um, but I'm just going to go ahead and hold down the control button in the uh, viewport, choose the helmet, and, um, and let's go into the graph editor. So first of all, we've got the timeline here. And here is the point in time at which we really wanted to start animating the helmet individually. You can see there's a... Uh, I like to look at the object and think, okay, well, this helmet is mostly going to stay in place. It's got, you know, uh, it's about the same shape of his head. So it's not really going to move unless some sort of strong exertion of force exists. So we really shouldn't be doing anim any animating at all unless uh, we see a strong force present. So the first, I scan the animation, the first place I noticed that was the spot where he goes down. You see the root drops down a little bit, or he's anticipating a jump. He jumps up, and we get this very fast, this is, let's see here, one, two, three keys. He goes from the top of the helmet being here all the way to being off screen. So it's a very fast motion. Um, and then it hovers for a little bit, kind of similar to the bouncing ball exercise. You see that shape there, and then it comes back down and plop. And the other second motion I noticed is that it comes to a sudden stop there. So the idea that I came up with was that, well, it would be more realistic uh, and also fun to, to see, to see that helmet shoot up and then maybe come off of the head a little bit, maybe to the point where the... Uh, the neck strap actually comes up to the neck so it kind of floats above him and then as he comes down his this is where his feet plant his downward motion stops the head keeps going forward and then we can probably have the helmet rattle a little bit so that's our goal we're just going to have those two changes we're going to have the helmet come off the head float a little bit plop back down on the head when gravity takes effect and in a realistic fashion and maybe have it jostle around on the head so first of all, we want to identify um, a starting point. So we're just going to scrub through with the arrow keys here. And I think that he's going up, he's going up. And we have this fast motion probably right about here is a good place where maybe you start to feel like the helmet's going to come off. So I'm going to press the M key, create a key. And, uh, and then right here, I'd say this is probably the... So think of the bouncing ball exercise. We want to get that um, that flat key where where we're getting the where it starts going from one direction to the other direction. So our next key should be when 
the helmet stops floating on its own and then starts coming down with the head. So we'll probably, well, let's say, let's just fill that out. It feels like it should kind of start coming down about here. So we're going to press the M button and let's go ahead and make the change. So we're going to have it transform. And let's just say at this point, the helmet goes far up enough where get the strap here. Let's just say it comes up to right there. And let's review that. So we can see the helmet comes up. And it looks okay. We'll probably come back, you know, and refine this. But right now, for that particular moment, that looks good. And then, uh, and then we're going to have the part where it hits. So we've got the pl feet planting here. And then plop. That's probably where the helmet will go back to where it was before. So instead of moving it around, we want to make things consistent. So I'm just going to go ahead and highlight these, copy, so uh, control C, and then just control V because it will automatically paste wherever the marker is, back onto the head. So now, plop, so again, plop, no, it doesn't really work, so plop. All right, so now let's get into the graph pattern. Now, the only thing we changed, the only value was position Y. So let's go ahead and look at this. And we can see right away, no flat tangents. That's always something we want to start with. We want everything to be flat. That's just my personal preference. Uh, it tends to look nice when you do flat. I mean, you notice that camera movement from the feet to the head at the beginning of the video. That was a flat tangent. It started off at a still and then slowly went into a camera motion and then slowly came to a stop. It looks really nice. And in general, flat keys are going to be the most attractive for you. So here we go. We are going to just focus on the viewport here, and we're just going to feel this out and make sure that everything looks like it's moving in a realistic fashion. So first of all, let's start. Actually, let's zoom out a little bit. Start a few frames before. It's popping up. And see, that feels like it's popping up a little early. So, and maybe this is even getting a little too high. And this is just, you know, we just consider these things as we look through the whole animation. This part looks really good. The way it's right here, you know, it's moving down at a fast force and then plop right onto the head. Looks great. So let's go ahead and refine this. So everything looks good up until about this point where it just got a little bit too high. So. I didn't really like any of these three frames here, so I'm just going to go ahead and use logic and just say, well, what if we move this down? Maybe not quite as high as it was before. Let's see how that looks. And my computer's too slow. That looks a lot better. So look at this, three keys, and already we've implemented a significantly better looking shot by taking an existing animation, taking an element from it that needed a little more refining to, to make it more entertaining. And that happened. So now let's move down here. So the next thing we wanted to do was have it wiggle a little bit. So we're going to look and think of this in terms of force. So naturally, you've got this force already happening. The helmet's moving down at a fast rate because it's being pulled by the neck brace. Uh, it's being pulled down with the body. The body comes to a complete stop right here. And the helmet keeps going. And then it runs into the head. And, you know... It gets to this point, it's kind of coming forward with the head. Well, the head stops, so maybe the helmet should keep going. So we look at this line here, and we're going to continue that. And let's just say right here, we're going to create a key. And we're just going to have, instead of a, oops, instead of a position, we want to do now rotation. So let's switch to rotation. And we're going to use the position X. So now we create a key here. So here's the key that was originally placed because uh, we had everything selected when we made those keyframes. Here's the second keyframe. And uh, we're going to go ahead and have that helmet. We don't want it to be ridiculous. <laughs> but just a little bit where it's going to be noticeable. And already you notice that this is counter animating, which we do not want. So we want this, in this case, to be a linear key, which means that this side stays as it was, and then we have 
this side interacting with the secondary key. So here's a great example of where you can use a linear key to get the field that you want. Zoom out. Do we see it? There we go. All right. Now that looks great. Look at that. But it still it needs to go back where it was eventually. So we're going to have it settle back into place probably not that long after. So maybe like right there. So let's see how that looks. And again, my computer's too slow, so we'll just scrub through it. Um, you know, I don't like the fact that it ends up back with his eyes being shown. Uh, and this is just a personal choice for this particular shot. So nothing is going to hurt us or nothing is going to stop us from just leaving it down there a little bit for this particular frame. Now his eyes are still showing. And you know, we, that, just, that saddle just looks a little nicer, not moving around too much. And maybe just have it take a little bit, you know, we've still got a little bit of inertia happening. There's some energy still happening here. So let's just make another keyframe, like maybe two frames later, three frames later, something to settle back into. And what I like to do in this situation is use a new spline. Let's do instead of linear, which is what we're seeing now, let's do spline. And so, and this is still flat, you notice. So it's going to do this and it's going to spline into this key. So it's still the same key, but now it's going to kind of settle a little bit at the end, which will give it a little more natural motion. So it's sliding there and then it kind of slides back down into place. You see that just a little subtlety. Honestly, in motion, you're, you're not even going to see it, but it's, it adds a little element of realism, which ultimately makes it a difference when you have it finally rendered in the shot. So let's just scrub through this again, make sure everything looks okay. You know, maybe that just goes a little too far um, and, and maybe not because I'm looking at this camera. Yeah, I think that it's just a little too much. So hold down shift, middle mouse, drag it down. Yeah, I think, I think that's a lot better. Okay. So that was the second thing we want to do. And the third thing was um, maybe put a little bit of a, a wiggle into it from side to side. Well, I don't know. You want to keep in mind realistic forces. Like it would be funny to have it kind of maybe do like a little circle around his head. But there's not really any elements in the motion. Like when I animated the shot, there was really only just the, um, the rotation X on the head. So realistically, there should only be you know, that same force. I mean, from a physics perspective, it would only be in that section, but there's really, we have a little bit of creative freedom. Uh, you can get away with a lot in animation and the whole idea of animation is to push the boundaries. So what I want to do is, you know, let's look at rotation Z for a second. We've got the same keyframes as before, so we really shouldn't have to do anything different. Um, just take those existing keyframes because don't mess with what works. Um, you know what might be fun is when the helmet comes up like this, maybe do a little bit of counter animating like that. Have the helmet maybe just go off to the side just a little bit in this example. And again, we don't want to mess with the existing animation. We like the way it was before, so flat tangents. So it just turns to the side for a little bit, and that will give us an excuse now. We've created the motion that we want. So now, looking at the overall curve here, back in the graph editor, now we've got this downward motion, and realistically, it doesn't make sense. There's still energy happening in the scene, so we have an excuse to, to continue this sideways motion now. Um, so let's do that. Let's just create two keyframes here. So, you know, um, it's a good rule of thumb to, to not keyframe every frame unless it's you're being really OCD about the motion that you're trying to do, if it, especially if it's like super fast and you need every frame to count. Usually you want to have gaps between everything. So we've got this motion where it's kind of doing this little tilt here and then it's going to hit the head and swing to his left side or the screen's right side. So let's do that. It's going to swing a little bit. Maybe now it's hitting his face right here. So it's a little bit humorous because he was asleep and, and he, he kind of awakes and realizes that he should have been on duty, so it's a little bit of a shame his helmet hits himself in the face. So that's a little bit of humor we could put in there. 
And again, I think that's just a little too much. So let's go ahead and move that back up. And again, flat. This is a motion that's going to ease in and ease out of, so we want it to stay flat. Middle mouse button shift. Back up there. I still want it to kind of look like it's hitting his face a little bit. So there we go. Now this is what we call, this is going to pop up a lot. And a lot of your work when you know refining everything, once everything's all said and done, is what we call cleaning up your keyframes. Now this is a linear, you can see right there. That's not what we want. This is a motion, you can see from here. Now this is a strong keyframe. This is where a particular motion stops. The upward motion of the helmet is stopping. Um, and this keyframe, it's also stopping because it's kind of settling, it's, it's you know swinging down and then it's gonna swing back up. This keyframe is, is just for positioning sake. Um, so it does not make sense uh, for this thing to be um, kind of easing in and easing out. This is a continuous motion. Does that make sense? So it's a continuous motion from one pose, which is this pose, to this pose, from there to there. The re so with that in mind, we're going to change this to a spline so that we get a continuous fluid motion so we don't get this weird pause in the animation where just some weird, you know, for some reason it, it sticks. We don't want that. We want it to be one fluid animation. And just to make things look nicer, I'm going to grab this here and make it so that the energy of the line seems to flow a little more naturally. And it's, you know, you may find reviewing it that that just doesn't make sense. But, you know, you usually want to obey that rule, you know, try and get everything to flow into each other. So, yeah, cleaning up the keyframes there. So now we've got the helmet. Bloop, hits his face, bounces back up where it's supposed to be. Got that little cell. You know, that looks all great. I don't see any, looking at the shape of the helmet, I don't see anything that doesn't make sense happening there. And it's at this point that we're going to want to render it, render this particular moment, and, uh, and see how it looks. Because a lot of times, just scrubbing through the animation, you're not going to catch everything um, at speed, things are going to look different than they do when you're animating. So it's never good to stay stuck in the animation for like more than, say, 10, 20 minutes. You always want to go back and render it and, uh, and see how things turned out. So, uh, yeah, um, what I would encourage you to do is um, find an example like this. Maybe get a, the animation set of the soldier laughing or do something simple like this where I just have the soldier standing there and just moving his head around. And then playing with that helmet and get, get used to adding your own little personal flair to each animation. Because that, honestly, that's really what this graph editor is for, is to, is to give it your own personal flair. And to, to make the animation your own, I think, is a good way to put it. And ultimately, to, the goal is to make it more entertaining. Um, possibly to make things a little more realistic and less like they're coming out of a game. And, uh, and you know, that's what makes stuff like this fun. So, again, I hope this was a, a helpful tutorial as well. I'm going to show you a shot of the finished product uh, doing stuff like this uh, comparing to the original shot. And I uh, hope you enjoy the tutorial. We'll see you on Reddit.